Hey viewers, one of my top video requests is how to convert a mountain bike from V-brakes to disc brakes. So, that's what I'm going to do with this guy. Okay, now the reason I chose this particular bike is because it's got uh, disc brake caliper mounts on, both on the front and in the back. Um, now, it might be possible to uh, convert a, a bike over that doesn't have the mounts on the frame. They make little adapters and they can be either expensive or cheap and I don't know how well these would work. Uh, I don't know how solid they would be uh, and I'm probably going to play with these in a future video but uh, not in this one. I'll start off by removing the wheels. And then remove the old brakes and cut the cables because I'm not going to be able to reuse them. In the back as well. And then just pull all this cable out and the cable housings because all this stuff is going to be replaced. Now your old wheels aren't going to have any way to uh, mount the uh, disc brake rotors onto them. So you're going to have to get some new wheels. And I have a pair of wheels that I got and these have the, uh, the mounts for the disc brake rotors. This style here uses six bolts to hold the rotors onto the hub. There's another style out there that uses like a lock ring, uh, this is from Shimano. But I think the style that holds, has the six bolts is actually the more common. So this is one thing that you're going to have to consider uh, when uh, looking at the cost of upgrading to disc brakes. Is you're going to need new wheels. So I'm going to be using the same cassette. I'm going to transfer this over to the new wheel. And so this has like a lock ring on here. So I got my lock ring tool, I got my chain whip here. And go ahead and remove this lock ring. And pull that off of there. And then I cleaned up the cassette, so I'm gonna install it over here onto the new wheel. Uh, get everything lined up here. I got my lock ring here. And then I want to torque that down to, uh, I think about 40 Newton meters. There. So now I have these uh, rotors, they're brand new, and I want to make sure they're, they're clean of oil because I don't know if they uh, coated them with oil when they were shipped to keep them from rusting, but I want to go ahead and wipe them down to make sure they're free of oil. And I'm going to use uh, isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol, and you can find this at your local drugstore. Uh, a lot of times in your first aid section, it's used to, to uh, clean wounds and things. And so I'm going to use a clean rag. I'm wearing uh, like rubber gloves here because I don't want to get the uh, oil from my fingers onto the rotors either. Um, any oil or stuff like that on the rotors will uh, contaminate the uh, brake pads and I don't want that. So just pour a little bit of alcohol onto my rag here and I'm going to give the rotors a, a nice wipe down to clean any uh, leftover oil or anything off of them before I get ready to install them. Now my rotors are nice and clean and ready to be installed. Okay, I swapped the tires from the other wheels onto these wheels and so now I'm ready to start installing the rotors here. I'm wearing rubber gloves because I don't want to get uh, oils from my fingers onto the rotors here. And so when installing the rotor, you want to make sure that you have it uh, mounted so that it's, it's rotating in the correct direction. Usually, the, if there's printing on the rotor, it'll be uh, facing out. You can also look for like a uh, directional arrow, kind of like this. And so that should be the direction of the rotation of the wheel, uh, probably counterclockwise. Um, and so just go ahead and lay 
the rotor on there so that the holes in the rotor line up with the holes in the hub there. And so now your screws, you want to have uh, Loctite on the screws there. These came uh, already with Loctite uh, pre-applied on there, but um, if they don't, uh, use like Loctite blue thread locker on there. And then these screws here, they're Torx screws, so you want uh, to use like a Torx driver or a Torx socket. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to install the screws in each of the uh, holes here, but I'm not going to tighten them down all the way. And so now that I have all six screws uh, installed there, notice that the rotor is still really loose and that's okay. So what I'm going to do is, what I'm going to do is uh, this screw over here, I'm just going to tighten it down until it kind of uh, contacts down in with the rotor. Then I'm going to go over this side here and tighten this screw down just so it makes contact there. I don't tighten down all the way. Then I'm going to go over this screw. So I'm going to do a sort of a star pattern and go to this screw here. Just tighten it down so it kind of makes contact there. Over this screw. Here. This screw. This screw here. Okay, and so now I'll go back in and I start just tightening them down a little bit more. I don't, I'm not going to crank them down. Just kind of tighten them t so they're, they're sort of snug. And so now I'm going to use a torque wrench uh, with a uh, T25 socket on here. And so I'm going to torque them down to about 55 inch pounds. Inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds. And again, I'm going to still do, do it kind of incrementally. So I'll start on this one here. And I'm going to still do it in a star pattern. So just kind of tighten this one just down a little bit. Go over to this one. Tighten this one down a little bit. And after they're all tightened down to about uh, 55 uh, inch pounds, uh, we're done with this rotor and go ahead and do the other rotor on the other wheel the exact same way. Now I'm ready to mount the new wheels here. Okay, I'm ready to start installing the calipers. These are the calipers I have. Uh, they're made by Avid. They're uh, BB5 calipers, very uh, basic uh, calipers. They're um, mechanical calipers, they're uh, cable operated. Um, nothing real fancy, but they should work just fine. Now the rotors I have installed on here are 160 millimeter rotors. Uh, there are smaller ones or bigger ones, but 160 millimeter is a fairly common size. So based on the size of the rotor I'm using is the size of these mounting brackets that I need. So for a 160 millimeter rotor, um, I need a zero millimeter IS bracket for the front caliper. And for the rear caliper, I need a 20 millimeter IS uh, mounting bracket. So if you have different sizes of rotors, you're gonna need different size of brackets because the brackets actually control the spacing of the uh, caliper here relative to the rotor. Um, and you can find that information online as far as what size of brackets you need for the different sizes of rotors. But these are the ones I need for this particular install, so that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to mount the uh, front caliper first. Uh, the little bracket here, there's an arrow, and the arrow is going to point up basically the direction of the rotation of the wheel here. And this little uh, part here, I have this turned um, all the way uh, counterclockwise here so it opens up the uh, the brake shoes in here the, the brake pads I, and also this part here needs to be loose so that it can uh, be adjusted here um, and so I'm going to slide this little opening here over the rotor like this and then I have these uh, mounting screws here which will go through here there's a uh, little uh, thread locker stuff on there already so kind of start these into the holes in, into the bracket here, the threading. Like this, get that one kind of started. And get the bottom one here started. Like this. And these are uh, Torx screws, T30. So I'm gonna tighten these 
down a little bit here. I'm not going to really take, torque them down quite yet. Just kind of get them down until they are sort of taut a little bit. Like this. And see that's loose on there, that rotates around in there. And I'm going to adjust this in another step here. But I need to tighten these screws down here. Now according to the instructions that came uh, with the uh, disc brakes here, the calipers, these need to be tightened down to about 80 to 90 inch pounds. Inch pounds, not foot pounds. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten these down kind of incrementally a little bit. A little bit this one. A little bit this one. And I think that's about it. And then same thing with the uh, the back rotor here. I have this uh, turned all the way counterclockwise to open up the uh, pads in here. I have the bracket on here. It's going to be installed with the arrow pointing uh, in the direction of the uh, rotation here. This part is loose to allow it to be adjusted. And I'm just going to slide this over the rotor here. And then I've got my screws. Again, they have thread locker on them. And so I'll start this screw in here and start this other screw down into here. And they're Torx T30 and then tighten these down the same way I did the front ones. And according to the specs, these rear bolts should be tightened down to about 40 to 60 inch pounds. I don't know why it's different than the front one, but that's what the directions say. So that's what I'm going to do. And like that. So now I'm ready to uh, start uh, fitting the, uh, the cable housing here. And I need a piece of cable housing to run all the way from the brake lever down to the caliper here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the cable housing up from uh, the caliper here to the inside of the uh, fork here, run it up here, and then fit it up into the brake lever up here. Just kind of test fit it in there. I want to have enough slack over here, so it's going to come over kind of to the, towards the center line the, here. I'm going to go, go over to the brake bridge here and then run the, uh, the housing down to the caliper down here. Maybe add just a little bit and then just cut it down here. Okay, so now to test fit this, I'm gonna run this up back behind the inside of the fork here. I'll fit this down into the caliper here. I'm gonna go to the inside here over the uh, little mount here. It's gonna go over to this uh, brake bridge and go up in here into the brake lever like this. And I'm gonna zip tie this down to here and so that'll keep it away from the wheel there and I think that'll work perfect. Now to install the uh, the cable here, these are our uh, V-brake levers which have the same pull as what the uh, disc brakes require. If you have uh, cantilever brake levers then you're probably going to need to replace the brake levers as well. And so let me see, get these little slots lined up in here, get this fed through here. And I'm going to screw this all the way in for right now. I may need to screw this out a little bit. I'm going to put a ferrule on each end of the cable housing here and then run the cable into the cable housing. Get this seated in here. Then I'm going to run the cable down here through this barrel adjuster here until the housing is fully seated here like this. And then run the cable down through this clamp down here. like this. I want to have the slack out of the cable, but I don't want to have it to where it's pulling this. And then tighten this clamp bolt down here. And then if there's slack in the cable, I can use the barrel adjuster up here or on the brake lever to go ahead and remove any of the slack out of there.
Now I need to adjust this caliper down here. Um, what I want to do is I want to rotate this little dial on the side clockwise and as I do that a little pad is going to come out uh, to the inside and what I want to do that is adjust it so that pad comes out hits the side of the rotor there and while the rotor is centered inside this little slot it's kind of hard to see with the, with the camera there uh, but if you actually look at it in person you can actually see it so I can either rotate this dial by hand or I can use a T25 Torx driver and that's what I'm going to use, a T T25 Torx driver. So I rotate this out and I see the pad come out, touch the side of the rotor and where the rotor is right in the center of that slot and that's where I want it to be like that. So now that I have that dial adjusted over there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the handbrake so it clamps down and while I hold that, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this screw here and tighten this screw down here. And that will hold the caliper in alignment there. And this is a T30 Torx driver here. And then I'm going to torque these down to 70 to 90 inch-pounds. And then I want to trim this cable here down to about uh, 20 millimeters. And then put a crimp end on here on the end of the cable here and press that down so it doesn't fray like that. So now that we got the caliper locked down and adjusted um, this uh, inside uh, pad might be dragging a little bit on that rotor because we had it right up there so we might want to just back it off a little bit and I can just back it off by turning this counterclockwise and it go by feel to what feels good so I just go by one or two or three clicks until it's moving freely in there and maybe you can go one more click there and you just want to go by feel and then also just uh, tie, try uh, pressing the brake and see what feels good to adjust that uh, inside pad like that and then I want to zip tie this uh, cable housing here the cable out of the way here so it doesn't rub against the tire there so I have like a little zip tie and I'm just gonna go around this uh, uh, fork bridge here and zip it here they do make like little guides that you know, kind of stick on there you could use something like that uh, but this should work and kind of hold it there hold it keep it from rubbing against the tire there and I'll go ahead and snip this off here like that now let's test this bad boy Boom, boom. And it's working. Now I need to cut a housing to go from the uh, right brake lever back to the caliper back there. Okay, now I actually have a couple options here. I can run a piece of housing from the lever back to this cable stop, run bare cable across there, back to this cable stop, and then run housing all the way back. Or there's these little mounts down here um, and I can zip tie and run a continuous piece of brake line uh, housing uh, from the lever all the way back to the caliper and then just zip tie it in place here. Um, I think these are more meant for hydraulic lines, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just run one piece of a housing all the way back and just use these little mounts there. Okay, I got my cable housing cut. I'm going to screw this barrel adjuster in a little bit here. Can I get the slots lined up here a bit? Uh, hook my uh, cable into there, run it through these little slots here like this. I can tighten this in. I have my uh, cable housing here. I cut it to uh, what I think is the correct length. So then I'm going to run the cable into here. Get it seated into there. And then to help keep the uh, cable housing kind of out of the way, I'll just put like a little bit of a zip tie. I'm not going to tighten it down all the way at this point, but just kind of have it uh, 
loosely holding the cable there. Same thing over here. That way I can be able to slide the housing through there until I got everything kind of ready. And then here's another little one here. I'll put the zip tie through this one as well. And now I want to run the uh, cable back here through this barrel adjuster. Pull this through, get the housing fully seated in there. I'm going to run the cable down here through this clamp here like this. And I want to pull the cable taut in there. I want to get rid of the slack out of there, but I don't want to have it so it's pulling that up. So I just kind of get this here and then tighten this clamp down here like this. And if I end up with uh, some slack in the cable, I can use the barrel adjuster here or the barrel adjuster up on the uh, brake lever to help just get the slack. But I don't want to have it so it's pulling this up. Now the same way as I did on the other side, I want to adjust the caliper. I'm going to adjust this uh, little wheel there so that uh, this pad comes out and touches the rotor while the rotor is still centered within that space, like that. Now we need to lock the caliper in place. What I'll do is I'll compress the uh, brake lever so it tightens the uh, caliper down on the rotor and then tighten these screws down here. And this is a T30 driver here, same as the other side. Like that. And now I want to torque these uh, bolts down here to uh, 70 to uh, 90 inch pounds. Now I want to trim this uh, cable here down to about uh, 20 millimeters. And then I can install like a little uh, crimp end here on the end of the cable and squeeze it on here like this. And so now that I have this caliper locked down, I can go ahead and back off this inner uh, pad just a little bit, go like one or two clicks and just see how it feels there. And it doesn't feel like it's dragging, so like that. And so now I can tighten down the zip ties here, holding the, uh, the cable in place, like this, and trim it. Well, almost done. We still have these post sticking out here from the old V-brakes, and there are several different options with these. Sometimes they're removable, sometimes they're not. Uh, if they're not removable, what you can do is you get little covers like this, and just uh, pop them over there like that. Um, or you could uh, get a, a saw, like a half saw, cut them off, get a Dremel tool, grind them down nice and smooth. Uh, now these ones uh, are removable. Uh, there's, there's flats on here, and they unscrew. What you can do is, I'm not quite sure exactly, there's flats on here, and I'm not sure exactly what size they're supposed to be. A 9mm wrench is uh, just, it's, it's loose on there. An 8mm inch is uh, just too small, doesn't fit on there, and an SAE wrench doesn't really seem to fit either. So I'm not quite sure what size these flats are supposed to be. Um, usually what I'll use is I'll use vice grips and clamp onto the flats there. Now often these are uh, held on, they, they put them on with like high strength thread locker, like th uh, you know, like Loctite Red. Um, in which case what you, you're going to need to do is heat up the post. Get like a propane torch and carefully heat up the post, careful not to damage the paint, but heat the post, that'll help break the bond of the, uh, the thread locker there, and then you can unscrew it. Um, or use like a, maybe a soldering gun or something else to heat up the post to help break that bond of the thread locker. Then what I'll do is I'll get the vice grips and very carefully clamp onto the flats of the post and then just unscrew it. 
and then it comes out like that. Now once you get the post out of there, uh, you can come them up. They sell like little uh, plugs called Break Boss plugs um, and that screw in there and cover up the uh, holes here. And they come in a couple different sizes. Uh, these ones here are 10 millimeter, but they also come in 8 millimeter sizes. So, and they just screw right in there and cover up the holes. And so the upgrade uh, to disc brakes is complete, and that is how to convert from V brakes to disc brakes. Uh, as long as you've got the mounts on the frame, anyway. Uh, it's a bit of a process, but it really wasn't that hard. Uh, it just takes a bit of time to do it. Uh, but I think it's going to be a very cool upgrade to the bike. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. Hopefully you found this video useful or interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel, click the subscribe button and you can see the videos that come out. And I'm always coming out with new videos. I'm over on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Go over there, like that page. I post a ton of stuff over there. And I have a webpage, rjthebikeguy.com. Go check that out, sign up there, and I have uh, stuff over there as well. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.